Hi, welcome to section 7, finishing the application. In the previous section, we implemented the various map tools needed to add, edit and delete tracks. In this section, we'll complete the implementation of the Forest Trails system by implementing the Get Info feature, adding tools to set the desired start and end point, and to calculate the shortest path between these two points. We'll then finish off by tidying up our application and doing some testing. In this first video, we'll implement the Get Info tool. This tool will let the user enter various attributes about a track, including its name, type, and status. In particular, we'll implement a simple Get Info Map tool, then implement a custom dialog that lets the user edit information about a track. Then we'll add logic to the main program so the dialog is displayed when the user uses the Get Info Map tool to click on a track. And finally, we'll test out the code that we've written. Let's start by implementing the Get Info Map tool itself. All this tool is going to do is call a function when the user clicks on a track. All the interesting work will be done within that function. But anyway, let's add this map tool. Our new map tool will be called, of course, Get Info Tool. The init method for our class will be very simple. This is almost identical to the other init methods we've implemented. Now, when the user releases the mouse button, we simply check to see if the mouse was over a feature, and if so, we call our designated function. That's all there is to our map tool. It's pretty simple, isn't it? All the interesting stuff happens in response to the user clicking on a track. When the user does click on a track, we need to display a dialog showing the current information about the track and giving the user the opportunity to change that information. This dialog will be implemented as a custom subclass of QDialog. Let's start implementing this custom class. We're going to call this class a track info dialog. Let's start defining our new class's init method. This init method is where we define the contents of our dialog window. We're going to need a pop-up menu listing the various types of tracks. To create this pop-up menu, we'll need a list of the available track types. Similarly, we'll need a pop-up menu of track direction options, so we'll need a list of the available track directions. And we'll need another pop-up menu listing the various track status options, so we need a list of these too. We now need to define the various input widgets, which we'll use to display and change the track attributes. As you can see, we're using the lists we just defined to populate the type, state, and direction fields. We now need to set up a form layout object. This lays out the various widgets and their associated labels side by side. We're now going to need to add an OK button and a Cancel button to our window. We'll finish our init method by laying out our buttons side by side. And then we'll define the overall layout for our window. Now that we've laid out our window's contents, let's define some methods to use it. We'll start with the load attributes method, which copies our features attributes into the dialog. This is a bit lengthy because we have to convert the type, direction, and status values into the appropriate index into the pop-up menu, but the code itself is quite straightforward. There's only one more method to implement here, which is the save attributes method. This takes the attributes values entered by the user and stores them back into the feature again. Once again, this is a bit of a long-winded method, but there aren't any surprises here. So now we have our get info dialog all ready to be used, along with the map tool. Let's now use these two classes to implement the get info action within our main window. We'll start by creating a new instance of our get info tool. We can now implement the get info action itself. As you can see, we simply activate the get info tool when the user checks the toolbar action and switch back to panning mode when the action is unchecked. When we instantiated our map tool, we gave it a reference to a method called onGetInfo. This method will be called when the user clicks on a track while the map tool is active. Let's now implement that method. As you can see, we create an instance of our track info dialog, load the features attributes into the dialog, and then run it. 
If the user clicks on the OK button, we then extract the features attributes and update our tracks layer. Let's now implement that method. As you can see, we create an instance of our track info dialog, load the features attributes into the dialog, and then run it. If the user clicks on the OK button, we then extract the features attributes and update our track layer to save the changes. Let's now test out the code that we've written. We'll use the get info tool to change a track's attributes. Change this to a walking track and call it the waltz. Now, if we click on OK, the information will be saved. Now, let's, say, let's write our changes to disk. Yes. If we now go back in and edit the track again and get info a second time, you can see that the information we entered has been saved. It works. In this video, we implemented the get info action. We'll turn on track editing mode, click on the get info action, and then click on our track. And here is the get info dialog. We can use it to change the type of track and the name. If we click on OK, that will be saved away. If we then turn off editing mode, the changes will be written to disk. As you can see, the track now has a different visual appearance because a walking track is different from a road. Now, if we go back in and do get info again, you can see that the details are persistent. It works. In this video, we implemented the get info action. We created a map tool that calls a specific function when the user clicks on a feature, then wrote the custom get info dialog class to let the user edit the feature's attributes. We then updated our main window to display the feature's attributes when the user clicked on it and to save the changed attributes back into the map layer. Finally, we tested our work.